Hello everybody. I'm actually sitting in my driveway, <laughs> waving at whatever neighbors come. Um, actually just enjoying the weather because the past two days has been cold. And so today, all the birdies are out and the sun's out. So this Puerto Rican girl is gonna come out and enjoy the weather. But I just wanted to just jump on this video and just say, um, I'm thinking about you guys. I feel like lately I just, I don't know, my heart's just been grieving for things that you hear, things that you see, things that you read, testimony, I mean, not testimonies, but testimonies of what's happening with his bride. And I feel like the enemy's just honestly trying to muscle his bride, muscle his prophets, put fear in the bride. I feel like there's just been so much, not just sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, every abuse that you can think of within the body of Christ and And my heart's just honestly heavy right now for his bride, for the church. My prayer is, Father, that we would have eyes that really rightly see, that we would have ears that really hear, that we would have a spirit of discernment to discern good from evil. That you would protect your kids from anyone trying to manipulate them, from anyone trying to hurt them in any which way or form, cause them to get stuck, cause them to not heal, not be able to move forward. Where families are just falling apart. And I just wanna encourage you. The word of God says that my sheep know my voice. Keep being in that secret place. Like I was just encouraging my daughters yesterday. Like, like we need to just honestly be in that secret place. We need to really have intimacy with him and be confident in the things that he's showing us. Be confident in the things that he's saying to us and actually remove the muscles and begin to speak what he's showing us begin to be confident in the relationship that we have with him begin to be confident in the visions that he's given to us and the things that he's asking us to build and the things that he's asking us to say um the things that i'm asking honestly god like bring the right tribes and the right community around all of us and that we would all just continue to move forward like that we continue to move forward so today like I had a I had a dream not too long ago and God was just saying I believe that it was mindset over brokenness and you know mindsets can change your perception of the things that you're so of what you see and of yourself and he was telling me i think of everything i want you to think of everything that is full of truth like i need you and he's like and not just myself but i felt like this was over his bride like be, what is the truth what's the truth like we can all focus on well i'm broken and i'm this and i'm that and and i get that i mean we just walked out of a hard season and we've lost a lot and so i understand the trauma i understand the the hurt feeling i understand the bitterness or I understand the walking with a limp like I understand all of that and the word of God says that God is near to the brokenhearted like those that mourn he mourns with you 
he wants us like he he wants us to boldly be able to come to him boldly boldly saying hey this is my heart this is what i'm going through this is what i've gone through and to be able to my gosh like have the right people around us that we can just express ourselves and say hey this is what i've gone through this is what i'm going through and and i need you to speak into me i need you to help me i need i need freedom i need truth to be actually spoken into me and god just kept saying like what is the truth like know know my truth you, the word of god says that take all your thoughts hold them captive like take all your thoughts and put him and think of everything that's true that's of a good report that's noble that's pure like what is he speaking over you what is he saying about you like what it how does he see you because that it says that the truth will set you free and it'll begin to heal i think sometimes we even communities can focus so much on your trauma, brokenness, and and instead of helping, they're just, they're not. Because the focus is the brokenness, and we're all broken, and we're all this, and we're all that. And, and God's saying, well, it's not how I see you. <laughs> I see, I know you're broken, and I want you to come to me with that. But I need you to begin to speak truth into that, over that. Because it will heal and set you free but there's a process even to that and it's okay to walk in this process of healing i think sometimes we try to hurry um our healing process i think sometimes we try to deny what we're going through what we're feeling and the enemy's just muscling his bride Taking her into a cave of just like despair and fear and loneliness. And that's not, that's not, that's not where he wants to take you. That's not where God wants to take you. He wants to heal you. He wants to give you rest. He wants to encourage you. He wants to speak hope into you. He wants you to see yourself the way he sees you. He wants to see how he you know he knows the plans that he has for you he knows the end from the beginning he knows he knows the plans that he has for you and i'm always so grateful for the time for this season where this was oh my gosh like 17 years ago when i pretty much lost everything i was going through a separation and a divorce and after the divorce was finalized, God began to just draw me close to his heart and began to teach me, began to show me things that um, people literally said that I was crazy, that I needed psychological help because God was asking me to stand for my marriage. And I remember going on Sundays to church and this never came from my lead pastor, but this did come from leadership within the church. Um, I had an amazing pastor, but the leadership, Lord God. At that time, it was like they would just begin to give me prophetic words like, I'm in disobedience. Like, I'm in, I'm, I'm where I'm at because I chose to be in disobedience and get into a relationship that I should have never gone into. And... Like these were the prophetic words that they were giving to me and that God was not telling me to stand for my marriage, but to move on because he had something better for me. And thus says the Lord. And, but in my intimate time with God, he would show me something completely different. He would speak to me in such a different way that I was not, I wasn't brought up in hearing his voice. Like I had, God used this situation where I had lost everything to draw me closer to his heart and to teach me how his voice sounded like. And I just began to stand for what he told me, my what he the plans that he had for me. He began to show me how to pray for my husband, how to look at my situation. And I thank God that in the middle of where I felt 
Like I was so alone. I had lost all community. I lost, I was like, oh, you almost feel like you're exile. You're the black sheep of, you know, cause you're standing for something and you're saying something that no one sees, special leadership. If leadership doesn't see what you see, then you're wrong. Like that's what a lot of these places make you feel. If the leadership doesn't see this, then you must be wrong. Then you're discerning wrong. You're seeing wrong. You're dreaming wrong. You know, you have a wrong view of God and yourself and whatever. And guess what? 17 years later. And I mean, God restored my marriage. Healed my marriage. Added to our family, two more children. Has blessed us beyond and it has, and it's been a process and it hasn't been an easy process. It's been a journey, but it, I always go back to that time and I'm so grateful for that because he taught me how to be his daughter and how to hear his voice. And that foundation that I, that was built, I've continued to build upon that foundation. I've gone through different wilderness, through different seasons, but I have continued to build upon that foundation because it's just made me more hungry for him. It's made me want to know him more. And I literally was just part of a, uh, I just came, my husband and I didn't, I haven't really shared any details with anything and I want to, I honestly do. I have this whole timidity or, you know, don't talk about, this and don't say that because you know you're just gonna be labeled offended and you're just this and you're slandering and i was like i'm not slandering if it's the truth okay slander is a false testimony against somebody mm -mm. i was like do you or no one is allowed to tell you that your testimony and what you've walked through is a lie that's how the enemy wants to muscle you you have a voice and you have a testimony and God is asking you to stand up and begin to share your testimony. And it's not, see my testimony, it's not that, it's not what I just went through, it's the after fact, it's what I gained. I, it's the, my gosh, like, it's, it's what he's done for me, it's a relationship I have for him. It's, it's like, I'm more in love with my husband than ever. Like. Our testimony is the hope that I have in him, that I know that anything with him is possible. No matter how hard a situation is, if he said it, if he spoke to me, I'm going to trust and believe that he'll turn things around for me and that there's recompense and that there's a blessing for me. And just that truth, his truth has just sustained me. The hope that I find in the, mid, in the midst of where it just almost feels hopeless like sometimes when you feel like you've lost community and family and everything, like he just, like there's just so much hope in him. Like he's just, he knows how to lead. He knows how to lead you. And we just need to step in that confidence of like, God, like you have spoken to me. You, you, this is what you have said to me and voices have come against what you have said to me. The enemy will come against the word of the Lord and so that you can just drop it and so that it doesn't have its fullness, so that it doesn't come to its fullness, so that you don't birth the promise. And there's been so many stillbirths, so many people just giving up, so many people just... I don't know. And I've just been honestly grieving, grieving for his bride because we walk through that. We, I mean, I know what, what, it, what it feels like to, to just be spiritually abused by the church. I know what it is to have no one trust and believe in the word of the Lord and what he's speaking to, to you. Like, I know what it feels like to, to feel alone and lonely, but you're not, that's the thing. The best place that you can be is to hold on to his word because he's always gonna turn it around. So I'm just encouraging you, what are the things, what has God spoken to you? 
that maybe the enemy used other people, leaders, families, situations to just shut you up, to muscle you, to make you double guess yourself, to make you feel so broken that there's no hope, to make your situation seem so hopeless. Like, sit with him today and just begin to say, Father, like, remind me again of your truth. Like, remind me again of the things that you have spoken over me, over my family, over my marriage. Like, remind me again. Begin to whisper, but let your whispers be so loud that will literally shut every voice that seems so loud right now let my like just my eyes be so fixed on you right now let me hold on to your truth because this brokenness that i feel or or my situation like you will heal it and you will turn it around and there's recompense coming and my family belongs to you my children my marriage my finances my health it, it my, my life is in your hands and you've got me you got me your word says that your sheep know your voice so god just you know my thing is like god just silence every other voice silence every other voice that's keeping your kids from not being able to move forward silence every voice every voice of confusion right now in the name of jesus and that you will really begin to stand up in confidence. In confidence. No matter who comes against you. No matter what you hear. No matter whatever. Like just stand up. Even if you're walking with a limp. Even if you. Like I told my husband. Like I'm I'm walking with a limp right now. And I have a. Honestly. Uh, I feel broken hearted. But I'm walking forward because that's what healing looks like. You know, God gave me so, like a year, over a year ago, he gave me such a such a specific vision, such a specific picture of a person that I had just been through like this massive car accident. And this person was just laying in bed, just, you know, tubes and, you know, just everything broken stuff and just laying in bed. And suddenly, I could see like a time lapse. Like I could see time passing. But as time passed, like tubes were coming off and things were, you know, the casts were coming off. And, um, and now it was time to get this person out of bed and to stand up. And sometimes it's hard when you've been laying down for so long to get your mobility going. That, that therapy, like that's hard. Um... But you have to do it. You have to begin to learn how to walk again. And you have to learn how to speak again. And you have to. And it's hard work. And it's actually more painful. It's easier to just stay in bed. Almost unconscious as to what's going on. Than to actually stand up and begin to do that physical work. Because it's painful. Because it's painful. So... I just began to see this person taking just a step at a time, but they were moving, moving, and moving. And suddenly, like I saw this picture of this, like they were completely whole. And God said, I need my, I need my bride to start to, to get off the bed. <sighs> that dying bed, that bed of, of recovery. Like I need, I, I mean, recover, but move forward. Like I need my bride to continue moving forward because the more you move forward and the more you speak truth and the more you work, you, out, you know, say, I mean, the more you, you're in that secret place and the more you keep moving and the more you, you keep worshiping him and you, and you're speaking his truth, it begins to heal you and it begins to, that Jesus begins to make you whole again. So my encouragement is don't stop moving forward. Get up, get up. He is your strength in the midst of when we're feeling weak. He is near to the brokenhearted. He mourns with you. But at some point, we got to keep moving forward. We got to begin to just shut every voice that's bringing confusion and begin to be confident in the word of the Lord over our life. What is God speaking? What is he saying over me? And let me grab onto that and let me, move, you know, let me begin to move forward. And that's honestly just my prayer lately. Like, Lord... Continue to encourage your bride. 
even at night, begin to give them visions and dreams that will be so specific to what you're saying over them. That it will, like, my God, that your word would be the, the ultimate. That there will be no confusion, no back and forth. Lord God, that we will be confident what you're saying and that we would move by faith, move by faith. You show us the first step and then we move. And then you show us the next step and we move. And we move according to your rhythm and we move according to your sound and we move according to your word. And we keep moving and we take our swords and we take our armor and we begin to cut literally the grab that the enemy has those strongholds we begin to just get rid of them over our families over ourselves over our finances and you begin to see you becoming a mighty warrior a mighty voice in the midst of so much darkness and so much hopelessness right now where god is literally shaking what needs to be shaken and that's great so that the things that need to stay will stay so I'm praying. I, I'm praying. I am praying that his bride will rise up in confidence once again. I love you all and know that um, we are praying and we're standing with you all.